Hi hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this random weave sculpture. First of all, I thought I'd give you some influences and some examples of the type of thing that we're gonna to create today. Here are two examples, very simple projects. The thing I love about the random weave and the styling of this is there is a kind of flow to it and it's so close to how it would normally grow in nature and it's a perfect project for beginners. One of the things that I found really difficult is trying to get things perfectly straight, lines and things very neat, and these are great because you don't have to necessarily worry about that. Some of my influences are people like Laura Ellen Bacon, she probably won't remember, but my first ever filming project, I was like cameraman number four, and we filmed an installation that she'd done in Derby. She does, imagine this, but much more beautiful and the size of this room and bigger. She does all these beautiful kinds of intricate designs and I'd love to have a go at bigger stuff like that, but I think that's where today we're gonna kind of hopefully create something that's sort of reminiscent and inspired by Laura Ellen Bacon's work. There are other artists out there that I've been really inspired by, like Matt Tommy. The thing that I love about his work is that he creates these beautiful designs and they are a lot of the time using simple weaving techniques like the random weave. And also they're different materials. It's not just willow. It's not just farmed willow in a certain way. A lot of the time, and I like these, it's foraged materials, which again, that personally inspires me. And I suppose that brings us on to the materials that we're gonna use today. <gasps> Echo's here. Echo, come say hello. Come say hello to all the viewers. Yeah, I know there's only like three or four of them, but it's still wor not worth your presence. You're too expensive for that. Sorry, everyone. First things first, collecting your materials. Now, my aim for a lot of these projects that I'm doing at the moment is that I'm trying to find places that are either farmed, so for example, either hedgerows that are gonna get cut down anyway, and things like farmed forests, so forests that are full of pine trees. Sometimes you can kind of get in and kind of scavenge forage after things have been cut down. Or I've noticed that a lot of the time around the paths and roads of those, so I haven't had to go into off-piste into the forest that much, and I haven't had to disturb that much of the ecosystem around there, willow grows and various other things that are quick growing, willow, hazel, honeysuckle, stuff like that, grow around the edges specifically there. What I was also looking for is if you can see signs of damage in the example that I'm showing now, this is one that I collected recently where it was clearly damaged by a farm vehicle or something. So I could see that therefore that is likely to be damaged again or be cut again, which is why I was then taking the willow that you can see has grown lots of liable pieces of willow grown in, that, in their first year, perfect for basket making and projects like this. So that's why I cut all of that back and hopefully that will also encourage growing for next year. Plus areas like that is great for spruce root because there's so many trees around there that you won't necessarily do too much harm by collecting a little bit of spruce root here and there. I have made a spruce root harvesting video. I go into much more detail in regards to that. But anyway, those forests are great for this. Another area is hedgerows. That'll be cut by a farmer, and then throughout the year, it sends up those shoots. So it's kind of like pollarding, really, in the it sends up lots of straight, great shoots that you can use in your projects. So for example, this here at the back, that's hazel that I've collected from the top of a hedgerow. And I actually collected that a week later, the farmer went in and collected everything else, <laughs> basically. So, you know, I've collected one bundle. You wouldn't even really tell that I've collected that bundle and then the next week it was all cut down anyway. But materials for today, what we're going to use is willow and, ah, here we are. <laughs> that brings me on to starting your weaving sculpture. First of all, you've got to choose what you're going to weave around. Example here, so either I found this bit specifically because without the basket, it stays and sits on a table, on a flat surface. Or you're picking something like this one where the structure that you're necessarily building around isn't gonna be something that it stands on. The basket's what it stands on, like so. And this just becomes part of the aesthetic. The way I treat a project like this is you're finding the piece that then the rest of the form kind of evolves from there. So instead of thinking, oh, I wanna make something that's gonna be an egg shape or something that's more circular or something that has a hole at the top or something that has more of a hole at the side, you know, 
you can have that in your mind, but I think this will inevitably kind of force you to go a certain way. So for example, here, obviously it forced me, it made sense to make a hole around this section here. So let's find our structure. Here we go. <laughs> that decision was so tough that it actually, I got hot and I had to take my jumper off. <laughs> Purely from the decision, nothing else. Now, starting your structure. Finally, finally, people say, finally. How long into this video and you haven't even started weaving yet? Let me know, actually, in the comments below if you like the videos like this where I try and give more context and discuss the materials and things first, or if you'd like to see some videos where either I shut up and don't talk and just weave, or ones that get a bit more down to weaving a bit quicker. First of all, find a piece, make a circle. This first circle that I'm going to make is going to be the size of my opening. This willow here was harvested within the last couple of weeks. It does mean that this may shrink and therefore, kind of like this example, when I made this, this was strong in the structure. Obviously, as it's dried, it's shrunk a little bit and that's become a little bit loose. Something to be aware of, but one thing that I love about this structure as well is that I think it is a bit more forgiving as it dries. Not only can you go in and add more in, like I could easily add more into this structure to strengthen it back up again, but generally as a structure, I noticed that with the project that I made for Abel, the one that you may have seen, made another video about making a random weave larger basket. I was really surprised at how well that kept the strength in the structure months and months later. But for now, I'm just bending this a little bit. You can either do that by running your thumb along or you just kind of work the willow and just kind of bending it. It will have a natural curve in there, especially wild willow like this. It inevitably has probably grown out of the side of something like that. So it will have grown and curved. And then you're just accentuating and continuing that curve. If you need to, you can see here, I'm just resting it against my body because I'm stopping it kinking in the middle. And then you're just slowly working it round into a circle. Then that's just a case of weaving it back within itself. Okay, there we go, number one. I'm gonna do another one just to make this a little bit stronger. This time I'm gonna go the opposite side and go the opposite direction. The reason for doing this is that it will then help to create a stronger structure, a stronger circle overall rather than it being too really thick on one side of the circle and thin on the other. There we go, circle created. How though do you connect this to that? I mean, you might not guess, <laughs> you make another circle. <laughs> This is the bit that could turn off a lot of beginners because it is very fiddly and if you don't stick with it, it's something that can seem like it's just becoming a mess and, and isn't working properly. So my advice would be just stick with it. It will look beautiful, don't worry. I hope, this is, I'm talking to myself just as much as I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> don't worry if you have to take bits out and sort them out again. To do this, what I'm going to do is start off by connecting it to the lower piece of my structure, the bottom circle, and then create a loop that goes between there and the top st structure. And I'm just gonna try and do that a few different times so that it starts to create bars between my structure, like this. Something else that I might try and do now is I could try and weave underneath this so then this one now could potentially go underneath and then I'm using the structure itself to start to hold things in place. You could even create another circle and put that in between like this or another one in the middle. That's how old balls are created. So you could cre create one where you've put it in like this. Totally up to you. I think for myself though, keep going, putting these together like this as well as starting to weave it into the structure itself on these lower bits. And through the magic of television, <laughs> that will all be sped up. Are you ready? Let's go for it.
So we're a good few hours on from when I last spoke to you. And the reason is because, do you remember me saying about don't give up, just keep going? Yes, it may seem like a bit of a mess and you may need to sort of try things out and, and, and maybe even not necessarily start again, but move things around. That's what I learned today. What I started with was I wanted to put it on top. Then it was like, oh no, that's not gonna work. So I moved everything over to one side and I had this bit in the middle here, that was like the edge of the basket and everything was there. But that meant obviously, it was just, it, the, the center of gravity was now, you know, the bulk of the material was in the wrong place. So unless I put something on the bottom, which then would stop it from rocking, which I didn't really want to do because it then made the basket like from here to like here. So I ended up moving everything back in, tying it back to a different part of the basket. And this is what we've got here. So my idea now is because this, the view is obviously gonna be down this way, you're still gonna make something of that beautiful structure with inside the basket. And hopefully it'll create quite a nice shape while having the, mo the bulk of the material still here above where the center of gravity will be. So for now, continue putting this support structure in. I'm then gonna be at a point where I can just start weaving in and out and not necessarily having to either tie them in so that they're tight or tie them into either this part of the structure or the base of the structure. Okay, stop talking, continue. There we go. It's uh, definitely coming along. <laughs> definitely has evolved and misshapen as I've done it. I kind of like the fact that it's misshapen. This is gonna go long into the evening, I suspect. And while you watch me continue with the sculpture, filling things in, how about we have some music, eh? ended up much bigger than I'd planned. The thing that I was going to make today to show you how to make it, which in essence is the same, was going to be something this kind of size, and I've made this. <laughs> so what I'm gonna attempt now is basically this. I'm just gonna try it around here. So the way that I did this, if I show it to this camera here, there's the front and there's the back. I've tried to keep it so that each time I start, it's just to the left or the right, whichever way you wanna do it, of the previous one, and they're generally the same length. This is what I'm gonna try here to make a bit more of the border here and also to try and kind of draw your eye in. So it's just a case of always trying to go round and round in the same direction, and then once I start building up, it will then be a case of trying to make it uniform so that where I started the previous one, I'll start next to that the next time around. Okay, let's see if I actually finish that tonight, probably. <laughs> I continued into the daytime, but I got it finished. What do you think? I don't know what I think, <laughs> to be honest. I've done a bit of extra work today, so I've probably put about eight to 10 hours worth of work into this. I took the, some of the structure, the circular stuff that I did first of all out of here. And including in that, I also took some bits and pieces that just looked a bit messy. My original brief to myself, make a focal point of the piece of wood that you're building around. I'm not so sure if I've fitted that brief. <laughs> you know, this has just encompassed it. This is another prime example of a beginner doing something that evolves and develops as you do it. And that's the kind of beauty and the enjoyment of a project like this. And that's why I would 100% recommend it to anyone who is looking into getting into weaving and especially weaving with forage materials. 
So if you've enjoyed it today and if you've enjoyed finding out about this process, I've made a video about a very similar type of product, but actually a more useful kind of harvesting basket, which is being used right now by Glass Bren, as well as a playlist, which is about growing and weaving with natural materials. And it's where I store all the videos that have helped me out and the ongoing kind of weaving journey that I'm on. For today, that's it. Thank you everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.